world of motorsports, it can take years to put together just one successful team. Imagine how long it might take to put together eight teams. Well, in the case of the off-road racing team known as the Rough Riders, it was just a matter of a few short months. In fact, from the team's introduction to the first race was just two weeks. The idea behind the Rough Riders was to bring together the off-road racing teams of Ford and BF Goodrich under a single banner. The lineup was formidable. Rob McCachron was signed to drive the Venable Racing Ranger in stadium racing, and also Venable Racing's F-150 in desert races. Enduro Racing expanded to field a brand new four-wheel drive F-150 for David Ashley, and a Bronco for former motorcycle champion Dan Smith. Manny Escara drove the Strop Motorsports Unlimited Class Ranger. Paul and Dave Simon shared a four-wheel drive Ranger. Chuck Johnson and Johnny Johnson teamed up in Spirit Racing Stock Class Ranger. John Swift debuted a brand new Ford Explorer in the Sport Utility Class. The talent was certainly there. The number of race victories and championships represented by that group was almost too numerous to count. But how long would it take for the team to gel? That question was answered very quickly. The first desert race, the Parker 400, Manny Escara won his class and showed that his new Ford Ranger would need no sorting out. Escara's fellow Rough Riders, Dan Smith and John Swift, joined him in victory lane, and Smith even celebrated with an impromptu dance to commemorate the winning of his first race ever on four wheels. The transition isn't really too hard to make. It, uh, you use a little bit different muscles. I'm sore in places I've never been <laughs> sore before. <laughs> and uh, the dust is just incredible out there. The car guys have to go through the dust like you wouldn't believe. So uh, as far as making the transition, it's a piece of cake. Well, anything but a piece of cake was the way that Ascara would describe his record 10th Parker 400 win. I never ever thought the Parker 400 would be so darn rough. As smooth as this thing road, it was rough. <laughs> well, rough is what the next race on the schedule is all about. The Nissan 400 is the most prestigious desert race in the U.S. and the roughest. There must be something, though, about Ascara and rough races because he's been successful over the years more times in this race than any other driver. He followed up his season opening victory in the Parker 400 with another victory in the Nissan 400. And breaking into the victory column for the first time was Spirit Racing's Ranger in the stock mini pickup class with Chuck and Johnny Johnson driving. There wasn't much time for Ascara or any of the other rough riders to savor these victories because it was quickly time for the next race on the calendar. That was the San Felipe 250, where Rob McCachron was involved in a furious battle for the overall title all the way to the checkered flag. He wound up placing second overall, just a matter of a few seconds out of first place. Yeah, it was uh, pretty close, kind of tough. Uh, we had some problems uh, coming up to the zero the second time. I didn't have any second gear, so I ran the last uh, 40, 40, 50 miles with no second gear, and that kind of cost us the race, I think. Well, it was a better result for David Ashley put his new four-wheel drive F-150 into the winner's circle for the first time in his class. There was also a class victory for John Swift, who won despite a mechanical mishap that left him and his co-driver, Dino Pagata, doused with hot oil. It wasn't easy. It was a long day, but we never gave up. Well, that's what happened. Yeah, we worked hard for it. Like a wheelbarrow. That much better when you work hard. Well, meanwhile, in stadium racing, Rob McCachron really hit his stride. Fastest qualifier and race leader at San Diego, McCachron drove into victory lane for the first time at Seattle. A landmark accomplishment for the team. Yeah, I've been working real hard for this. All the guys at Venable Racing, BF, Goodrich, and Ford, they've been trying real hard, and, and it's great just to make this pay off for all of them. At the next race at Dallas, McCachron rolled over. He landed on his wheels and kept right on going. He damaged his engine, but it managed to propel him all the way to the checkered flag, but not much further. 
as McCachran celebrated his victory, the last few drops of oil dripped from an engine that most people thought wouldn't have gone another lap. Uh, the Ford can always go another lap. <laughs> well, a good thing because there was plenty of laps left in this season. The word Baja is synonymous with desert racing. And at the Baja 500, John Swift proved his new Ford Explorer was indeed Baja tough. He won his class for the third time in four races and stretched his points lead. Fellow rough rider Dan Smith, a Baja winner previously on a motorcycle, added yet another four-wheel victory to his resume with a strong run in his Bronco. The setting sun marked the starting time for the next race on the series, the unique Fireworks 250, which is run mostly at night. This race marked an important turnaround for the Simon brothers. After four disheartening losses in the season's first four races, Dave Simon calculated what it would take for the team to have any chance at all of defending their class championship from the year before. If we win every race from now to the end of the year, then we'll be where we want to be. <laughs> that, that's what we're shooting for. That's what we have to do right now. A tall order. The Fireworks 250 was to be the first of those must-win races, but the Simons put themselves at a big disadvantage even before the race. We were out testing the car day before the race and uh, did a lot of damage to the car, tore the front end off and rolled the car over, and the crew stayed up all night long, put the car back together, and then we had an electrical fire two hours prior to the race. They got through that, put the car back together. What did they do after all that? Well, they went out and won the race, of course but it was still going to be a long road back for them. David Ashley, also a winner at the Fireworks 250, really had an outstanding outing at the next race on the circuit, the Nevada 500. This epic odyssey through central Nevada puts a premium on high-speed reliability, and Ashley's four-wheel drive F-150 gave him the traction and the speed he needed to finish an impressive fifth overall, as well as first in his class and it moved him close to the top in points. And although they finished well after dark with only one headlight still working, the Simon brothers also won their second race in a row here. David Ashley went for his third victory in a row at the Gold Coast 300. This is a short, tough race, supposedly better suited to the nimble buggies that race here but Ashley passed dozens of vehicles en route to a sixth place finish overall, a class win that completed his hat trick and solidified his points lead. Yeah, it's a, it's a tribute to our crew, uh, the new team Rough Riders, uh, my crew chief John Castro and, uh, and his, his right hand man Danny Gonzalez, but uh, the Ford Rough Riders deserve a lot of credit for help along the way this year. The Rough Rider team concept really seemed to pay off at the Gold Coast race. In addition to Ashley's stellar performance, Rob McCachran turned in the fastest lap of the race. Manny Ascara took the lead in his class just two miles from the finish line and held on for a narrow victory. The Simons added yet a third victory in their improbable quest for four in a row. So we got one more to go, and we're going to do it. Meanwhile, John Swift also put his Explorer back in victory lane. And finally, the fifth Rough Rider class winner of the day was Chuck Johnson, who won thanks to an unselfish act by his teammate, Johnny Johnson. We did one pit stop and we didn't change drivers. And uh, John was the ultimate team player today because he stood there with his helmet on and his suit on and let me have it. And that might have been the difference, just the time taken because Spencer was right there. <laughs> I tell you, we got quite a team here. So it came down to the final race, the Baja 1000, the longest race of the year. It's a challenge just to finish and a major achievement to win. And three Rough Rider teams managed to do just that. John Swift's Explorer won again, and that gave him a team leading five victories for the season. And it also gave him the championship in the sport utility class. Not bad for a new vehicle in its first season. The Simons also won again, completing their improbable comeback from four season opening losses. For the second year in a row, they were the mini 4x4 class champions. And it was another victory for the team of Chuck Johnson and Johnny Johnson. 
Johnny is a veteran of just about every Baja race, and this title was his 14th a record among all drivers. And not only did Spirit Racing win the stock mini pickup class championship, but they also won the mini metal championship as well. Quite a crowning achievement for the Rough Riders inaugural season. When it came time to hand out all the trophies at the year-end awards banquet, the final tally represented quite a haul. Paul and Dave Simon, mini 4x4 champs. David Ashley, full-size 4x4 champ. John Swift, sport utility class champ. Dan Smith, rookie of the year. Chuck Johnson, stock mini pickup class champ and mini metal champ. In all, 23 class victories for the year. Not bad for the Rough Riders' first season. What will they do for an encore next season? Well, that question is one the competition may not want to know the answer to.